Hello, hello. So I'm just back from Iceland uh, just for a few days and I'm going back there in a few days. But uh, this is uh, going through the samples now that we collected and uh, getting the first bunch of samples ready for geochemistry and various uh, applications in petrology. This includes major and trace elements, this includes isotopes, but also fluid inclusion work and uh, various uh, microprobing efforts on the minerals. So, but I wanted to share the suite of rocks that we collected with you today and also provide a visual record for myself. So I'm killing two birds with one throw and uh, have a little look here. So this is one of the earliest samples and uh, this is a very rough kind of uh, uh, type crust. I mean, it's probably coming from Pahoy Hoi, but it was cooling down and it's a very crusty like material. Then we have some other samples here. This is tephra and you see the intricate glassy textures here. So this was thrown through the air and solidified prior to impact. Here we have more of this tephra, even with a bubbly kind of interior that is very glassy. And here's the exterior of some of these tephra class. There's a few bigger ones here. And that is very fresh material, you can tell from the glassiness. So this is going to give us some very good geochemical results. So here we have a bit of lava again. It's very shiny here. And uh, there's a bit of a bubble inside, a larger bubble. So this is what happens under the crust in the lava flow. That's how inflation to a degree works, that uh, gas exolution creates these bubbles. The bubbles can't escape through the solid crust and it pushes the crust upwards. So here we have another sample. And again, this is a glassy outer crust and a bubbly interior. It's a bit fragile, but um, this will be good for geochemistry. This lava sample here is really interesting. Let me turn it around because here we see what really makes this eruption. There's a lot of feldspar, plagioclase uh, is the calcium feldspar. There's a lot of feldspar in there. And here's another sample with the same nature. So a lot of crystals and feldspar is only stable in the top 20, 25 kilometers of the crust. So we know that this magma must have resided in these kind of depth and it must have produced these feldspars during the residence there. It's going to take some time to grow feldspars this size. So this magma was hanging around in the crust for some time. It's not straight from the mantle as some people may have claimed. So here's another tephra sample here and a beautiful tephra, tephra class with big bubbles in there. You can just about see that here. So big glassy interiors of bubbles. Of course, they're now broken, but uh, wonderfully light and fluffy material. I actually think it would swim on water. So here's a few more samples. They go into later of the eruption. This is now um, from the 17th. This was from the 10th of the eruption. This now is from the 18th. And um, this is similar materials, but maybe we'll see some geochemical changes if the supply reservoirs were different during the eruption, then we might even see some geochemical changes or we might not see geochemical changes implying that we are feeding the eruption from a larger magma reservoir. Here's a few beautiful samples. These have collector's value. This is the glassy part from a lava flow that was east of, sorry, west of the cone, of the main cone, which is actually now covered in the breakout on the 19th to the 20th of July. This part of the lava flow is now covered, so you can't get these samples anymore, not easily anyway. And um, here we have these beautiful glassy streaky skins. And uh, here we have the interior of it. And there we had big bubbles that were pushing things up. Beautiful surface. So then uh, some people on YouTube commented they would love to see the difference between a lava that was naturally cooled and a lava that we quenched. And here is one. This is a naturally cooled lava which we collected July 19th. And uh, this is a lava crust. Here you see the ropey texture. The ropiness comes from pushing this way. And this is like the skin on a hot chocolate that's pushed together. Then you get these wrinkles here. So that's the compression direction this way. And this is the interior. Again, it's very bubbly. These are the bubbles that are pushing upwards, making the skin rise up in places. And I've done a video there where we had sediment on top of the lava flow. Some people might ask how that works. Well, it's inflation. 
the material goes into the sediment and then the lava inflates, taking things up. So, and right then at the same spot we sampled this one and this is the quenched sample. This is the quenched equivalent. It's still wet from the quenching because it was in a plastic bag. Here you see the imprint of the spoon and this is super glassy. So the big difference here is that this sample will have less small crystals in the ground mass than this one because this one has cooled slower. For many geochemical applications it makes no difference. For major and trace elements they are not affected. But if you do textural studies then this is a closer reflection of the lava when it comes out of the volcano than this because this had more time to cool and crystallize. So for certain applications it's useful to have this. For many applications it makes a limited difference because there were some people unsure why we're doing the quenching that's the reason for it, so that we have material that is representative of the lava as it came out of the vent. And this is lava that had, you know, a day or two to cool down and solidify. So, the last few samples here are tephras again. And um, this is actually tephra from the um, material that erupted right at the northern end of the fissure. This is from the northernmost little vent. This is now no longer active, but uh, there was a spatter area from that vent. So this is a bit denser than the regular tephra. It was just a tiny vent and it was really within meters from that vent that we collected this. But it got quenched naturally by flying through the air. So this will be great to get a chemical idea about the early part of the eruption, the early days of the eruption. And this is tephra from close to the main vent. This area is now covered. We were about 150 meters away. The new lava that came towards the west after the uh, flank collapse was covering all of this. So glad we collected this just the day before the flank collapse. And uh, luckily the flank didn't collapse while we were there, but here you see this. And uh, here we have these interior glassy parts and uh, the exterior ones are a little bit more rubbly. So we have large bags of this. It's good because we need a lot to separate minerals for fluid inclusions and this is going to be the job that we're going to do later. So this was an overview of the initial samples we collected and they will now be processed and they will be sent off to the various laboratories that are collaborating with us and uh, they will also be made into slides for microscopy. So this effort has to be done right now so that we start getting geochemical data in already during the eruption and not just after the eruption has terminated. So thank you very much and um, yeah more soon on this. I hope you enjoyed that and all the very best and I'll report again in a short while.